Hello everybody, this is a collection video, um, sort of video, um, where I'll be showing you all my rolling stock as well as my engines, but, um, we'll get started with, um, starting with the engine class, going from the lowest to the highest. Alright, so here we got Brighton, which is a Hornby A1 Terrier, Now you may know this from Thomas and Friends, possibly, as Stepney, but this is one of the other ones. I don't know if this is special, but it has a small little thing. It says Gold Medal Paris Exhibition of, of 1878. I quite like this, I guess it's the only engine I have that's not from the LNER. Um, I really like the LVSER colors. I mean, the chassis is incredible, it runs very, very nicely. I don't really run this too much as I don't have a lot of Southern Railway stuff. But it's incredibly beautiful, as you can see. The beauty, the details are beautiful, as well as the colors they've used. They've painted the smoke box silver, as you can see. As well as the safety valves, I think they are, as well as the whistle. But anyway, let's move on to the other logos. Alright, so here we got Doncaster. Now, this is probably something you know from Flying Scotsman which was the first one of the class. This is not one of them, this is of course Doncaster, as you can see, 2574. And um, it's very nice and detailed. This is the 2021 release with the die-cast running plate and the LED in the firebox. I really, I really, really like it, as it's the after 1925 design where they changed where the LED are are. The LNER only being on the tender and then the number being on the cab. As you can see, it has the raised cab, and I'll show you what that means here in a second. But as you can see, very nice model. It has a very nice mechanism, it works very, very well. And um, yeah, let's move on to the other ones. Alright, so here we have a different A1. This is Knight of the Thistle. Night of the Fizzle, whatever you want to call it. But this one is slightly different, as it was not built in Doncaster, but it was built in North Bristol Locomotive Works. As you can see, it has a slightly different plaque than the Doncaster build engines have, which I'll show you in a second. But as you can see, this slightly block here that sticks out, it's the smaller kind, and it was slightly bigger on Doncaster, as well as on the later versions. But another difference it is that it ha doesn't have lining or anything on the front windows as Doncaster has. As you can see it has slight lining and such. And there you can see the different builder's plate. And um, that's really a lot of the differences. Um, of course the seats are different. This one has flat seats as you can see, whereas Doncaster and a lot of the other models they have bucket seats. And as you can see this one has silver painted the uh, smoke box. And overall it's also quite nice. It's also a part of the 2021 release with the diecast running plate as well as the um, LED in the firebox. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the other ones. Alright, so here we have the last uh, Doncaster or Bresley A1s, not the Peppercorn ones, a tornado, but this is a 2023 release. Um, this is Hermit, number 4478. This was a part of the Big Four collection, um, where, which were launched in 2023 to commemorate or celebrate the 100th anniversary of grouping, which is where we uh, where you took all of the 200 railways in Britain and made them into big four, or four big ones. But as you can see, this one has a slightly different mechanism with different wheels, which are more realistic with the center covered, as you can see. But it also has a completely different bogey. But that's um, because you can now fit a front coupling to it, unlike the older ones. But as you can see, this one it has a slightly different shade of green. 
I think the older ones look better. This one looks better on camera. It doesn't look too bad, but it looks okay. But as you can see, it has an older cab, which is taller. Um, it's a lot taller. Let me just get down here for this. As you can see, you can see how much higher the older one is compared to the newer one. I'll just put that one there. It also has a taller uh, funnel, as you can see. Again, just using Doncaster as reference. You can see this is the later, much smaller one instead of the older, much taller one. And then if we move on to the front, the buffer beam is also different. As you can see, it's completely square. Now, in the later versions, there were cuts done to the front buffer beam right here, making them slightly smaller. But yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say about Hermit. It's a very nice model. Anyway, let's move on to the A2s. Alright, so here we have the Bachman A2 Sugar Palm. Now this is one of only two locos I have with its nameplate. As Don, what? Bachman, who make these versions of the models, they actually supply um, its nameplates, which is very, very nice. Of them, as you can see, I fitted the details as well right there and down here. But this is in the in its original condition, as it was built in 1944 48, 1948. And, um, it has the riveted non corridor tender, should have been talking about that as well. But as you can see, it looks quite nice, and I really like the shade of apple green they've used. And then they've also lined out the, um, the front windows, which looks incredibly nice. And that beautiful gold it really stands out. But as you can see, it has a single chimney, a very nice smart box. But this one was pre-owned, it was originally DCC. In fact, this is its decoder. But the previous owner, he fitted something to the chassis where you, where you can't remove the tender, which is fine. Right. I really like it. And I think talking that should do so it can be screwed in instead of just having it loose on uh, other versions of this model. But anyway, let's move on to the other A2. Alright, so here we have the other A2 that I have. This is Irish Elegance, as you can see. It also has the name plates or the etched ones. But as you can see, it's in a beautiful, absolutely beautiful livery. It's in the British Railway blue, green. And if I'm honest, this is probably one of the best versions of it I've seen. I think it's a lot better than Rumpies, but I think they're equally good, kind of. When they're running, they look just as good as each other. But when they're static, these ones look a million times better. I don't know why, it's just, it's just so beautiful. But something I haven't mentioned on the other ones is the cap detail. It's quite detailed, and some of it has been painted, but not with a lot of colors. Unlike a lot of the Hornby models, which here we have Hermit again. But as you can see, Kev has been a lot more painted on this one than this one, but they're still just as good. You don't really notice them when they're running. So, in my opinion, it's not really worth painting it at all. But as you can see, it has metal safety valves, which is something I'm very happy with. And then we got the tender. Now, this tender also has spring buffers. I've removed the cold load for a time, but as you can see, it has electrical lamps, so the sugar palm, as they have the exact same tender mold, but it also has a KD coupling, which I've fitted to a few of my locos, only three of them, one of them being this one, and yeah, that's really it. That's the cold shoot. Down here we have the wheels, so it's that beautiful early emblem. I really like it. And then over here on the front of the logo, we have the smoke box door. We have the smoke box door hinge, I think that is. And we got the running number, which is 60534. And it has a British Railways lamp, as you can see. And it has a few uh, electrical lamps. Anyway, let's move on to the other engines. Alright, so now we are moving on to the A3s, which is... As you can see, this is A3 uh, number 
2503 for Ducey, which was one of the last ones produced in 1945-1944. And as you can see, it's an apple green. It has a gloss finish, with, which none of the other engines have. But this was made to commemorate the death of the Sunrise Gressley in 2016. In a set of four engines, the A1 Woolwinder or Woolwinder, and this in a gloss finish also. And then an A4 Osprey in a gloss finish too, in apple green as well, as well as the P2 in a gloss finish. Now I only have Fiduci right now, but um, I hope in the future I can collect more of them. But yeah, this is the slightly older version with the plastic running plate and no LED in the firebox. But as you can see, it has lamps as I fitted uh, some time ago. And the chassis, in my opinion, is one of the better ones as it still has the wires which are a bit weird right now but it also has the old front bogey as well as having nothing to really change with the uh, model it doesn't have the new newer style of well wheels these ones are the older not painted wheels unlike the newer painted wheels on these ones and overall i just really like it as you can see, it's very nicely painted in the cab. And then the tender here, this is a non streamlined, non corridor tender as fitted to Ferduzzi when she was built. And she had this for her, for her, for her entire life. So she never got it changed or anything. But as you can see, this is a banjo dome. Okay? Remember that this is a banjo dome and not a streamlined dome, which I'll show you what is in a second. Anyway, Alright, so here we have the other A3 that I have. This is the White Knight. Now, this is one of the really old models in which you can remove the tender. I really, really like this version as you can remove the tender and it can still run like this. Not as smooth, but still quite smooth. And you still have the tender pickups, which, in my opinion, it makes it a million times easier to move about. As you can see, this is the cab. The one I told you about on the Fiduci with the Banjo Dome is that the, a lot of people mistake this dome here for a Banjo Dome when this is a streamlined dome and this is a Banjo Dome as you can see. Let me just move the camera off so you can see. This is the difference between a streamlined dome on the left and a Banjo Dome on the right. So. If you're talking about Flying Scotsman, for example, and talking about what dome it has, say it's a streamlined dome instead of a banjo dome, as that would be correct to what it is. Let me just move this one out of the way. But as you can see, it's incredibly nice. It's in probably its 1960s condition because it has the smoke deflectors and such, but it doesn't have the later style smoke box door as the running number plate. It's still up here instead of on the front hinged strap, which is later got, just like Flying Scotsman in 1963, which was preserved by Alan Beckley. And as you can see, it has a very nice speedo, which is a speedometer, which just tells you how fast your engine is going. It's left-hand drive, so it's incredibly nice. And a very nice nameplate, in my opinion. No really need, no need to give it a different one. I got the tender. This is a non streamlined, non core tender, but it has an A3 back, which means that this curve here doesn't curve up as much as the A3s would. And if you look back on Ferduzzi, you would see it has the A3 type. But as you can see, it has the Lake Crest, it's incredibly nice. And um, yeah, the tender again, it's so easy to cobble it together. I really, really wish Homie that would just go back to this instead of having to reinvent the wheel, basically, with the coupling seal. Because then they went to the wires, they work very really nicely. But now they use this system here, with pushing it together, which is very nice, but you can't run the engine alone and such. So I wish they would just go back to this type here, instead of having to keep doing a new one that's ultimately just not as good as this one. Yes, you may be able to put the DCC stuff in the tender, but still, with the newer, newer technology with DCC sound and such, you can easily fit a sound decoder into the engine. But anyway, let's move on to the other ones.
All right, so now we got the A4s. Man, yeah, well, I only have one of them, which is this one. This one currently doesn't have a name or a number, but it was originally Andrew K. McCosh, which I still have the nameplate of. As you can see, I have both of them. But this is going to be turned into um, Silver Fox in its 1954 condition, the same condition that it was in when it was filmed um, for the Elizabethan Express. And as you can see, it has the streamlined corridor tender this time. And as you can see, it doesn't have beading. Now, if you don't know what beading is, it is this little sort of ridge here on the top of the tender. That's beading, which this one doesn't have. As you can see, it's completely smooth. It has the silver jubilee tender with the bowed end. As you can see, it, it extends out a little bit. This was originally designed for the Silver Jubilee, as well as the West Riding, as well as the Coronation. But as you can see, it's incredibly nice. And one detail I really like about it is that it has the dummy Buckeye fitted right underneath the corridor connection. And the Anthem, as you can see, it has that older style tender coupling. And overall, I really like it. Now we have the engine, which of course is going to be turned into Silver Fox, but um, it has a crew. Uh, this actually came from Hermit, which you might not have thought about. And um, it was built in 1947, this one, which it will be changed to a different one. But as you can see, this is the front. It looks incredibly nice. It has a very nice front bowling. It says where it's headed at King's Cross. It has a single chimney and it has a very nice piece of valve gear. I really like this type. Then on the other side, it's also very nice. But we're missing one part, and it's the lubricating part, which is would have gone from here all the way up here, which was missing when I bought this Dolco second hand. But um, the, the part like this part right here was still on here, so I recently just removed that because it was a bit annoying. But anyway, I really, really like the slow cone, and you will be seeing a lot more of it in the future. So let's move on to the other engines. All right, so here we have the K1, which I actually got for Christmas, just like Irish Elegance. But this is a Hornby model. It has the Urban Emblem. In my opinion, this should definitely make a return to Hornby's range. It's incredibly, it's incredibly beautiful, as well as just. The smoothness of the running, it runs incredible. I'll put up a clip of it running here in a second. But as you can see, it's beautiful and detailed also. As well as just looks, you know, the paint. And then also these beautiful small little details here. As you can see, this has been this was also second hand. So it has a bit of damage, but it still runs incredibly nicely. As you can see, it has the blue plate right here. It was good at North British Locomotive Works with its iconic diamond builder's plate, as you can see. And then, on the other side, it's pretty much identical, but it's just still so beautiful, as you can see. Uh, mine has a, some glue marks down here, but that's perfectly fine. I haven't actually checked the cat. But as you can see, it's a beautiful detail. But homie, why is the with a regulator so long and if you don't know what it is it is this piece here why is this piece so long sticking out like i don't know if this is prototypically accurate it may be i don't know but like why is it just so long i'm thinking it's probably something you've done because you guys regularly mess up small details on models but overall this logo is incredible and if you want a good, small, or medium low size loco, get this thing. Even if you don't model the other than you are, it's just such a good loco. Anyway, let's move on to the other ones. Here we have the Bachman 04. This one is also in early British Bellies condition. And it has a very nice die cast coal load. But this is the only engine that I have, which is weathered. And if I'm honest, it looks incredible. It's nice and heavy, this model because it has the die cast running plate but those teeny tiny drivers when they're just running around the layer it looks so good and then even the cab as you can see 
It looks very good on the outside and on the inside as it has a bit of detail painted. And then on the front here, you can see beautiful front smoke box. Um, and then the oval buffers. I don't know why they why they overall have this in real life. Because for us, it looks a bit weird. Even on this engine, which I always had it. But I really like this logo. Uh, and if you're again looking for a freight logo, definitely buy one of these. Anyway, let's move on to the final logo. Alright, so I actually lied when I said the final logo, as we still have one more. And here we have the Oxford N7. I really, really love this logo. Mine is in LNR condition. I don't know if this is post or pre war, but I really, really like it. As you can see, I fitted a driver, as well as giving it a KD coupling. And I've given it a lamp, British Railways lamp, which isn't accurate, but I really like it. But one problem I had was with the coupling rods. The, the crank pins, those things that held them in place, they kept going loose. So I've had to remove them, and now it's only the driving wheel, as you can see that one, that actually drives the loco. The rest is just there, so it looks good. It still looks good while running. It just doesn't have the same amount of power as it did before. But anyway, let's move on to the final loco, actually. Okay, so this is the final loco I have. This is the P2 Call of the North. This is the railroad model, produced by Hornby sometime in probably 2014, I think it was. But um, here you can see the tender. This is just the standard A1 style tender with beading, and it has spoke wheels. And um, overall, it's quite nice. I really, really like this. And finally, when we finally got something correct, on all of your Hornby Railroad models, they have red stocks, which is these things from the buffers, which is not accurate to any LNER logo. They've always had black stocks. You've always fitted them with red, one, with red ones, like on British Railways locals. They never had this in their LNER days. They always had black stocks, no matter what engine it was. It always had. And if I'm honest, it's just a bit annoying when you buy something like the Railroad Flying Scotsman and you get less detail. Like, why did you give this one the correct lining when you didn't give it to the Flying Scotsman? Like, it's more expensive than this, yet smaller, and has a slightly better mechanism. But still, when you're paying 134 pounds, you expect it to be a little, a little bit more detailed than what you actually get. I mean, this one costs 127 pounds from you. And it has more detail than it. But um, it has. I've actually custom fitted this with a brass whistle. As originally it comes with a plastic one. And then it also has lamp irons. Which is something none of the other ones have. But that's because this one was originally designed. In the design clever phase. Which is when Hornby they decided to. Make super detailed models. With the same price. Yet less detail. And then. This one turned out to be something a lot of people didn't really like because they felt like they wasted their money because they didn't, didn't get as much detail as they wanted. So I put it into the, uh, into the uh, railroad range and it's incredibly nice there. And then we have well, the completed local. We just put it together and then boom. It runs quite nice but give it a different motor. All of these ones suck on the super detailed one and the non super detailed one which is this type, <clears throat> they all suck. They're incredibly inconsistent, even with so many drivers. Um, it's incredibly inconsistent. It's probably more inconsistent than this one, which has a better motor, but yet less pickup. So it really annoys me when you give it a horrible motor just so it's less expensive. It's so stupid, because if you look on eBay, you can easily find a five pole motor, which is in the super detailed stuff, which cost the exact same, probably even less than these ones, with the, which are the free pole motors. So it really just annoys me whenever you cut corners for no reason. <coughs> but anyway, let's get on to a slight printing session. Okay, so in the last clip I told you that, uh, let's move on to the running session, but I forgot to show you my uh, rolling stock, which is what, what I promised you in the start. But here we have my British Railways Mark 1. 
Now this one came in the Family Fun Project as well as a different one. This one's the composite I think. But this one is the break one. These two came in the same set as Cockle the North, which thankfully cost me only about 130 or something pounds. But it's incredibly nice. These two one thing I quite like it is the fact that they have plastic wheels. Why well, couldn't you just have given them metal ones? I know you have unlimited of them. But not unlimited, but you get the point. A trillion of them. And I finished the brake one with a tail end. And they're incredibly free rolling. And they're very nice to any train set or train um, in general. So let's move on to the Gressley coaches. Alright, so this is the super detailed Gressley coaches. Well, this is all of them I have. This is Era 5. Um, I don't exactly remember when that is. But it's the same time period as the White Knight is in. And there is the completely maroon coaches, I think those are. But this is a full break or complete um, thing which they put all the luggage in for the express train so they as they didn't really want you know a big bulky ugly looking thing and a beautiful express train like this. We'll get onto this one later. But um yeah it has very nice bogies and these wheels here they're many but they're the exact same size as the ones on the BR Mark 1. But anyway you have these three coaches here they come in the, tr in the exact same train set as the A4. And um, they are special as they are part of the, mm, the Northern Humbrine. I don't really know how to pronounce that. Now if you do, please tell me how to. But this is the brake coach. It's a 61 foot coach. Well in real life they are, but this one is of course not. This is era 4 where it's half maroon, half cream, or crimson and cream. I really, I really, really like these coaches. And I just think they look incredible. I mean, the bogey is incredible. <clears throat> and the detail is a lot better than the RV or railroad ones. And the ends of them, they're a lot better, a lot more accurate. Now, here's one of the railroad ones. As you can see, that's the end of that one. And this is the end of that one. So yeah, they're a lot better on these ones than they are on the whole railroad ones. So yeah, these two here, they're pretty much identical. These two ones here. And they're just the normal passenger ones or coaches. As you can see, they're not the brakes. They're just generally in the middle of the train. So let's move on to the railroad stuff. Alright, so these are the railroad coaches that I have. These three teaks here. Um, these ones, they came from the Flying Scotsman Express train set. And if I'm honest, it's an incredible set with the Flying Scotsman. And I really recommend if you want to get started with double O and you want to use bigger engines, I think you should buy that as it's very nice. And you gotta save it for when you get better at model, modeling freaky because you can easily modify them to look a lot more like the super detailed ones. But anyway, these ones are quite nice bogies. They're a lot shorter than the super detailed ones, as these ones resemble more the 57 foot Gristies. As you can see, here we have the super detailed one. Yeah, it's just out of shot, but annoyingly. As you can see, this is one end of the coach, and then this is the other. As you can see, it's slightly shorter, which doesn't really bother bother me me personally, as they still look very very nice. And um, yeah, I mean they are pretty much identical. This one's just a brake, which I've also fitted with a lamp, tail lamp, and then we got the other ones that I have, which um, which are also. Incredibly nice. These ones come from the Mallard Express train, which this one is just a break too. But this one has the same livery as on the other super detailed versions of these coaches. And they're identical again. They're the exact same. No real difference. So yeah. 
Anyway, let's move on to the, so the last room stock. Alright, so here we have all the other building stock that I have. As you see, this is the Southern Railway Goods Building Stock. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the last room stock. The last room stock that I have. Well, they're not good. Look at you, man. Which I personally really, really like. It has some nice metal wheels. The color on it is quite nice. And if I'm honest, it's just really, really good. And let's just put that away here. Now I got a whole new bit. Now, this is the old railroad ones, which are okay, I guess. But the bogies on them are horrible. They have the large D-type couplings, which are not even a part of the main bogey, which also sucks because it can easily, easily, very easily just throw it out of place. And it's extremely annoying, but the rest of it is quite nice. As you can see, this is Rosemary. It's very, very detailed for a railroad coach. It's just a Pullman that's not as painted as it should be. And then the roof, which is a silver color, even though it should be a sort of dark gray. And I'm currently actually waiting on some more stuff, which is an A4, a Thompson coach, as well as a Pullman coach. Here we have the brake. It's pretty much the same. It's just car number 65. And it has, and it's a brake, of course. That's really it. That's the only difference between them. And then, over here we have a Great Western coach. It's a non-corridor one, which I fitted with a coupling, with a Katy coupling here, because it's usually um, the A2 that which pulls it. And um, on the other side, it is a normal coupling. That's because I usually run these with the Grizzly T coaches, which have the large D-type coupling, which can't pull up to the Katy's. But this is incredibly detailed. I really love the paint job on it. And I really like the fact that it has some small details even on the windows. As well as on the roof. Uh, and on the end is incredibly detailed with a quite small bogey. As you can see. But that one I really, really like. And I got my Oxford Rail Wagons. Now if you want a good wagon, I suggest you get one of these. Because they roll very, very nicely. As you can see, and this is still rolling. And it has these small couplings. It doesn't have strong buffers, but it's painted incredibly nicely. They're the exact same. One on the bottom is just the British Railways one, and this one on top is the LNER one. And I have five of them. They're pretty much identical, except for one of these having a different number. And then these ones being a bit different too in terms of running number, but that's really it. And we have this one, which is the LMS Big Man, which was very much used a lot during British Railways. And um, I fitted this one with a tail lamp as well, as this one is usually what I use at the end. And we have an Oxford, Oxford um, Big Man. This one runs very smoothly, but this is a great western one. And I don't really like the fact that it has the open compartment at the back and out of the front. And I just don't really think it looks as good as the LMS one, which is kind of double-sided. I've done so, this is the back end. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's move on to the actual running session now.
right, hello everybody, that was the learning session, hope you like it, or liked it, but um, I just wanted to show you something, probably no, no one of you, uh, none of you have seen this before, but those teak coaches I talked about, that was from the train set, Flash Flashman train set, and I don't have the engine, because sadly I have to swap it, but I still have the Nintendo, which as you can see, I'm currently modifying by removing the plastic cold out and removing the back here because this is going to be put onto an A4 which will be put onto an A4 which is called Lord Franklin, the last of the class <coughs> which is a part of the exchange trials in 1948 where when it became British Railways then they decided to test out all the engines on each other's routes but on the western main line, the great western main line the water cranes, the water cranes were too tall or too low for the tenders, so they couldn't get in here. So the back had to be cut down, which is exactly what happened to it. And that's the type of tender that Frank Scotchman actually has today. And um, that's because it was taken off for Farrington. But I'm going to be making a Lord Farrington in the same sort of condition that um, the, the white we, the white knight is in, and. Um, yeah, if you wanted to see me modify on the railroad flank with Mallard, you can just like and say yes in the comments. If you want me to see it, and if you don't, just don't comment. Anyway, anyway bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.